All right. For another one of the women's titles. And if you don't, if you say, no, Jim, you're incorrect, it's the TBS title. Well, I say to you, yes. And it's also another one of the women's titles. Because how are they ever going to have a male champion? They're not. Then it's a one of the, another one of the women's <laughs> titles. Yeah, okay. Think about it. You can't, it, you can't ever have a male champion. It doesn't say women's champion, but since they don't do intergender matches, then there's never there can never be a male champion unless you have some kind of like, I don't know, tweener fucking gender. Is there some mutually agreeable? person or gender or entity that can fight both men and women to where it could be a transition, but like the old WWF heel champion transition, somebody wins it from Bruno and nine days later loses it to Pedro. We'll have to get into that. But meanwhile, it's Taya Valkyrie in a rematch against Jane Cargill. And I was willing to give this, a chance because I wanted to see basically if it was better, if it could be better than the first one. But after the first one minute, I was already saying no. But now the, the entrance in this case, instead of Jane having dancers and the female rapper who performed her way to the ring, Jane actually got into the dance routine herself. She was doing the, the dance routine there right along with him. Maybe we found out what profession she's really suited for. Well, I don't know about that, but it does make you wonder, are there any ideas Tony Khan will say no to? No. <laughs> Is she now the baby Wait, face? Yes, there are some ideas that Tony Khan will say no to. Uh, fire your fucking goofy cosplayers and get some real talent? No. Let somebody else write this shit? No. He'll say no to a lot of those things. Well, she danced to the ring like no heel I've ever seen before. <laughs> and, and again, the heels are all presented as allegedly in their universe as either being cooler or nicer or more talented or tougher than the fucking putz baby faces. So anyway, Taya Valkyrie dove off the top and blistered Mark Sterling and turned her back on Jane and Jane stopped her. And then they went back and forth and they got some heat. And then she made a comeback and Ty hit her finish two count. Jane kicked out a little bit late. Referee didn't stopped anyway. And then Jane just got up from that finish that she was, they're all using Beth Phoenix's glam slam, right? So Taya gives Jane hers. Boom. One, two kick out even though it was late. And then seconds later, Jane just kicked Taya and picked her up and give her the fucking finish. How, and she got the three count. And so there you have it. And boom. Now Jane was 60 and O. And of course, Mark Sterling can't leave well enough alone. So he gets on the microphone and says, she's a champion that's going to defend Anytime, any place, anywhere, but there's no one left to challenge her. Awkward pause, awkward pause. Somebody get on the fucking IFB and tell the audio guy, play music! And music played. <laughs> and out comes Chris Statlander, and she looked good. I don't think she's from Andromeda anymore. She doesn't have her face painted up like an alien pixie. She's got size. We were interested in her work about a year and a half ago. As, as we talk about, she seemed to be getting better because she's pretty, we called her Chris Flatlinder about four years ago, but she was getting better. And then she blew one ACL and then another one. So she's been gone for intensive purposes for a year and a half. I'm sure she'll be rusty, but my God, in this field, a some kind of believable woman and the people woke up and as soon as she hits the ring they ring the bell and boom here we go little fight the statlander with a tombstone one two three big pop because at least now they got some payoff out of this 60 and oh 
I guess it had to get, they had to get to 60. Tony decided it's got to be 60 and 0 back at like 34 or whatever. It could have been 56 or it could have been whatever, but at least we got some payoff out of Jane basically just being fed opponents for three years with no programs or angles in as Brian, as you've said, a separate women's division. Well, now, but now is Statlander going to work with all of the girls or is she just going to fight with Jane and Taya? We shall but anyway, see. Would you have done it like this if you were going to get the belt off Jade? And again, Jade's been presented well on TV. Jade has actually popped a number on TV. Would you do a surprise loss of the title in after what was a clear angle setup post-match thing with Mark Sterling? It was ridiculous. Or would you have built up to something knowing that fans would think there's a likelihood that Statlander could beat Jade? I would have done either one of those, but I wouldn't have done it on fucking pay-per-view. I would have done it on television where everybody would see it. They sell 150,000 pay-per-views if they're lucky. They get 850,000 people watching the show on Wednesday night. Why wouldn't you do that on TV? Because it wasn't advertised. So it's not false advertising. You're not changing anything. Have Jane beat anybody. And then here comes, same thing, and here comes Statlander. Then the whole world gets to see it instead of these poor beleaguered pay-per-view fans. Yeah, Statlander comes out there, one of the commentators yells like, where did she come from? And I'm like, yeah, with her gear on and her music queued up. Where did she come from? <laughs> well, her music was almost queued up. Almost. 